Well, the Blue Jackets are in uh, Tampa Bay, Finland, preparing for the Global Series game against the Colorado Avalanche. I thought we would take a look at how their farm team is doing. So today we're going to talk all about the Cleveland Monsters, some players of import, and uh, how the team's doing as a whole. That's coming up today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you news, stories, uh, updates, and everything else that you could possibly want about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So, uh like and subscribe if you're enjoying it uh if you hit subscribe then you get notified when episodes go live it helps you out it helps me out everybody wins and uh i appreciate you even if you haven't subscribed i appreciate you but i would appreciate you more if you did no that's uh, i appreciate all my listeners or watchers but um let's talk about the cleveland monsters because they're doing a heck of a lot better than the blue jackets and uh, on monday we talked about a couple of players that are having pretty good starts to the season for the Monsters, so I thought we would uh, take a look at those guys, take a look at the team as a whole, um, and then preview some uh, some upcoming action for the Monsters. I'm going to try and do uh, more Monsters check-ins this season than I did previous seasons, because uh, it looks like the team's going to be fun as heck. So, uh, the Monsters are coming off a big win, uh, a 4-1 to win at Syracuse, uh, that was the uh, the Jonas Cup solo game, I believe. So uh, big win for him. Uh, his conditioning stint. Uh, they lost three in a row after uh, before that, but uh, for the most part, they're looking pretty good. Although it is very funny that uh, all of the all but one of their wins have come against the Syracuse Crunch this season. Um, they are four and four. They've got three wins against the Syracuse Crunch, which is very funny to me. They're currently sitting uh, third in their division. Like I said, four and four, uh, 500 points percentage. Um, they are doing mm, okay in uh, in special teams. Their power play is, oh, just like the Blue Jackets, the power play is uh, dire. Oh no, I'm on the wrong. T- I'm on the wrong thing. Please ignore me. The power play is fourth in the league, which is pretty good. Twenty eight point six percent. So I guess we know where all of uh, Columbus's power play goals have gone. They're in Cleveland. They've got eight power play goals in eight games, uh, which is, I mean, it's about as good as you can hope for. Frankly, um, like I said, fourth in the league, uh, second in the division. Um, the three teams above them, Toronto, Bridgeport, and uh, Syracuse, which is uh, very funny, um, considering Syracuse is, is struggling at the minute. But uh, in terms of the PK, that I think is where the uh, the Monsters are struggling. They are at 30th of 32 teams, which is not great. Uh, 68.6%. They've allowed 11 power play goals again in eight games. So could be better. Um, is it something to worry about? Maybe. Um, they are not taking as many penalties as most teams. Uh, they are sitting about... Uh, they are sitting... Oh, okay. Again, reading the wrong spreadsheet uh, column. It's very early here. I do apologize. They are taking the fifth most penalties in the league, so maybe they should do less crime, um, because if they're going to keep taking lots of penalties, then they're going to they're gonna struggle. So um, I would personally like it if they took less penalties, because 35 penalties in eight games is... Uh, a lot that's gosh that's almost five penalties a game i think uh i think it's it's about four and a half penalties a game which like i said is too many penalties um 
considering they've only had 28 power plays, uh, that's I would like that to improve. But for the most part, I think the monsters are doing okay. Like I said, uh, four and four, five hundred hockey for the month of October is uh, is not terrible. Um, tough, uh, tough week last week. Uh, lost to Lehigh Valley, lost to Wilkes-Barre Scranton, and lost to Utica. Um, although, in fairness, Wilkes-Barre Scranton is currently sitting at the top of the league, so I don't feel too bad about that loss. Um, the other ones are not as uh, not as impressive. Uh, losing to Utica, who were a powerhouse last season and are two and three this at this point of the season, and High Valley are two, four, and one. So, two teams at the bottom of the standings. Uh, the monsters, I think, can really do better. Um, and. I think they've got the players to do it, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute. We're going to talk about who's been playing well for the Monsters. Uh, but first, I've got to tell you all about Built Bar, because, you know, we love Built Bar here at Locked On Blue Jackets. And uh, you've got to try the new reimagined flavors. They've got a cookie dough topper, a coconut brownie bar, and a coconut brownie topper. They've got white chocolate peppermint granola. It's built to take on the granola bar, so it's more filling. And it's still super tasty. And because it's Christmas, they've got candy cane brownie and puff. Built puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. Uh, if you haven't tried built bars before, they are the best tasting protein bars ever. Ever. Like, they're better than most candy bars. They are covered in 100% real chocolate. They've got 17 grams of protein and only 130 calories. If you try them, it's going to change your life. Like, I'm not kidding. Um... The magical, wonderful time after you've tried a built Bar is so much better than the life you were living before. Uh, and you're probably wondering which new, which of the new flavors is my favorite. And that's kind of an unanswerable question because they're all so, so good. And because they're all different, you can order a mixed box. You can try all five flavors for yourself uh, as we come into the holiday period. You've got to try Built Bar, and here's the best bit, you can get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at Built.com. Once again, that is 15% off your order at Built.com with the code LOCKEDON15, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-1-5. Run, don't walk. So we talked a little bit about some players that have been succeeding for the Monsters uh, this season. Um, some surprises, some not surprises. Uh, I think Emil Bemstrom is the biggest uh, surprise, I guess, because uh, I thought he really struggled last season. Uh, but he's at 11 points in eight games, five goals, six assists. Uh, two of those goals are power play goals. Really impressive. Uh, he's shooting it. Oh, no, he uh, has <laughs> he has a 50%. I thought he had a 50% shooting percentage. That's not what's happening. Um, but he's sitting at 1.38 points per game. Um, and for a guy that is kind of one of those tweener guys, you could call him up and he could fit into the Blue Jackets lineup. I know that he hasn't had the impact that a lot of players, a lot of people hoped that he would, but he's clearly doing something to show that he's ready to get back in the NHL. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the first guys that are called up if they decide they, uh, they want something new, especially with, uh, Justin Danforth out long term. Um, I would be surprised if someone else goes down with injury. Uh, Bamstrom is one of the first guys that they call. Um, someone else that I think is going to be the first guy they call is uh, Kirill Marchenko, who uh, has nine points in eight games and uh, is, I think, doing everything that is expected of him. He had a really, really good camp. He uh, has a... Like I said, he's over a point per game right now. Just um, had a really good camp, had a really good uh, rookie tournament as well, I think. And it's it was disappointing to see him get sent down. But I do think that this was a really good thing for him personally. It gives him the chance to play, you know, a bajillion minutes a game instead of getting the, um, the Ken Johnson treatment where, you know, you play 11 minutes a game and struggle. Or Ken Johnson's not struggling. He's struggling to get ice time, I should say. Um, but those two guys are really um, the the guys that I am most impressed with 
so far this season. Um, Marchenko just looks dangerous every time he's on the park. Uh, he's, like I said, he's got five goals in eight games. Uh, I just, I don't know, he's he's impressing me every time he's on the ice, which is tough to do in the AHL, I feel like. Um, but it's really good to see the Blue Jackets have players in the Monsters that they can call up if they need to. And also after last season, where I think their leading scorer was Jay Christensen, who had like 42 points in 60-something games. Um, to have, like I said in the in the podcast, I think they have four players that are a point per game or more. Um, although if you... Yeah, they have four players, plus Gavin Bayreuther, who had three points in three games before he got called up. But that's... That doesn't count, I don't think. Uh, for players that have played all eight games, they've got four players that are a point per game. They've got Bemstrom, Marchenko, Brennan Gorns, and Carson Meyer. Um, three guys who got uh, significant a uh, NHL looks last season. Um, four guys that I think could be uh, effective on the Blue Jackets, frankly. Um, and I think also we should mention uh, Marcus Bjork, who is I think in his second year with the with the monsters this season? Um, he's got five points in eight games for a defenseman, which is pretty uh, pretty good. He uh, is oh no, I apologize. He was this is his rare rookie season, so uh, I don't know why I thought he was not that, but uh, he's having a pretty good rookie season so far. Uh, like I said, five points in eight games, two goals um, for defenseman. Really, really good. Uh, he's shooting at about 15%, which is probably pretty sustainable. Um, but yeah, he's on pace for, I think, you know, like a 20 goal season for, for a defenseman, which it's early still, but that's, I don't know. I think that's pretty impressive. I like Marcus Bjork a lot. I liked him in the preseason um, and in training camp. So the problem with, Blue Jackets defenseman is there are 700 of them. Um, and so it's tough to look at any of them and be like, well, they're going to get called up because unless I'm going to knock on wood, unless um, someone like Andrew Peake goes down long term, I think it's probably a case of this is the defense core that the Blue Jackets have this season. I don't think there's, there's just not room to call anyone up for whatever reason. They're not going to sit the Branson and Bean. Um, unless things go really, really poorly. So they might as well just enjoy being in the NHL and enjoy uh, the success that they're having there. Because, like I said, the Monsters are doing pretty okay at the minute. Um, I would like to see the penalty kill get better, but the power play's clicking, um, which is another reason that maybe they should call up someone like Bemstrom. He's got a wicked shot. He's got two power play goals of the uh, the eight that they've scored so far. So, you know, he scored 25% of their power play goals. Is the AHL a different beast than the NHL? Yeah, absolutely. But at this point, why not? You know, they've got to do something. They've got to change something. I don't think Emil Bemstrom is the answer to all of the Blue Jackets problems, but why not try? Obviously, you know, it's tricky at the minute. They're in Finland, so uh, no one's getting called up for at least a couple of weeks um, until they get back i think they have games this weekend and then i think their next games are the weekend after that so um we'll see maybe we'll uh maybe we'll see someone get called up i kind of hope so um i would like to see that happen uh i think it would be i don't know i just think it would be fun um i have no real <laughs> <laughs> real logic for that i just i think they should call uh they should call bemster up that's i think that's my choice they should call bemster up uh, i think leave marchenko down there um give him some time to develop i think bemstrom is showing that he's ready for another shot at the nhl um and i know there's a lot of noise about how he's a bust and a bum or whatever but he's also like 22 years old 23 years old you know he's he's not done yet uh, he's, I don't know, I just, it annoys me when, when people call 22-year-olds busts because he's 22, he's not done yet, um, and I think he's doing everything right, right now, so that is my, uh, 
an official recommendation, I guess, for, for the Blue Jackets is, hey, you should call up Emil Bamstrom. Uh, in a minute, we are going to do a little bit of a prospect check-in because one of the Blue Jackets prospects is doing some really cool things. So uh, that is going to be what we talk about in the next section. Thanks for making Locked On Blue Jackets your first listen today. Uh, for your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter to the most important stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So I wanted to talk about Jordan DeMay, because he's uh, killing it, frankly. Uh, I knew he'd had a strong start to the season. I've been kind of checking in with him occasionally, and it turns out he's doing uh, better than okay. Uh, he's with the Halifax Mooseheads in the QMJHL. He is their most recent third round pick. I believe uh, the Blue Jackets took him 96th overall, uh, despite the fact that last season he had 109 points. Now, the Q is probably the weakest of the three uh, leagues, but 109 points in 68 games is not nothing. Uh, currently, he has 27 points in 12 games. Uh, 12 goals, 15 assists. Like He's projected to have 153 points if he plays all 68 games in the queue this year. like that's It's bonkers. Um, and it's bonkers that he fell to the third round. I mean, I've talked about this many times, but it's... I don't know. It's because he's short, is what it is. But he's... Uh, I don't know, man. He is just obliterating the queue. Like, he's having two-point nights, three-point nights. Like, just every time he's on the ice, something is happening. And I love it. I can't get enough of it. Uh, I think it's so, so fun. Uh, They named him Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago, or last week. Uh, He was Player of the Week because he had six goals in three games. Uh, plus two assists, which, again, is just bonkers. Um, I'm really excited about Jean de May. Uh, is he small? Yes, that's why probably why he dropped in the draft, frankly. Uh, probably a combination of that and everyone, no one respects the queue, which is very funny to me uh, for various reasons. But, like I said, he finished third in league scoring last season. Uh, he's, I think, second or third in points in the entire queue. And... Uh, I'm very excited that he's a Blue Jacket, honestly. I uh, I don't know, man. I just think it's cool, and I'm excited for him to keep growing and developing. Um, he was also named uh, Player of the Month as well. So he was Player of the Week last week. He's been named Player of the Month for October. Like I said, 27 points in 12 games is bonkers uh he's tied for the league lead in points he's fourth in goals to uh, tied for third in assists and it looks like he's doing everything right um is he a couple of years away from being a blue jacket yeah probably but uh as soon as he turns 20 i think he's gonna get a serious look at the ahl and honestly if he can put on some muscle maybe grow an inch or two he could be a real a real difference maker, uh, and I'm super excited about that. Um, I'm going to try and do more of these prospect check-ins because the Blue Jackets have some really fun prospects. Uh, Denton Matejchuk is also currently tearing it up in the WHL, which is a lot of fun. Uh, he's currently sitting on. We'll do a, a Denton Matejchuk, a real look at Denton Matejchuk in, uh, you know, in the future. But he's uh, he went back. And, like, immediately had a hat-trick or something crazy, like his first game of the season after training camp, which, like I said, was extremely extremely funny and also fun. Uh, he's currently sitting on... Uh, he's got 10 points in nine games as a defenseman. So, you know, it's uh, it's looking good. The uh, the early the early returns on Denta Bacicic are fun. Um, so those are our, our two... Fun prospects. We'll take a look at a couple of other guys uh, as as the week progresses. Uh, we'll do a couple more prospect check-ins, but that's it for me today. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for making Locked on Blue Jackets your first listen of the day every day. They are... Uh, we're here every day, Monday to Friday, uh, unless I need to take the time off because the 
a power outage in the area I'm staying in. But uh, I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J K O B F O R S T E R. You can find the podcast at L O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. Uh, Thanks once again for making it your first listen of the day. Uh, for Blue Jackets, free and available on all podcast platforms, on YouTube. Uh, hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying it. Uh, I'm super close to my next milestone of uh, YouTube followers. So, if, hey, it would be really neat if we could hit that by the time Blue Jackets play their next game. Because right now, the Blue Jackets do not give me joy, but doing this podcast does. So uh, I'm having a blast. Hopefully you guys are enjoying me yelling about this terrible team uh tomorrow we will do another prospect check-in uh we'll probably check in with Dan Mateo because i'm thinking about him and uh we'll see if there's any more blue jackets news to talk about uh i don't think there will be but uh hopefully we'll have some good news to talk about who knows uh that's gonna be tomorrow's episode thank you once again for listening and until tomorrow make sure you stay locked on <laughs>